Helping my crew is what I do. When it comes to problem solving, students are empowered to think about things and find a solution for themselves. Problem solving is fun because I get to learn different strategies and then I get to learn what they're thinking. And the teacher's job is more to question, to guide, to help them come up with the answer on their own. I don't care if it was right or wrong, give me a thumbs up if you tried something new. It feels great to share in front of everybody and the people that are sharing, it's like you're learning from them. And then when you get to teach the people that taught you, then they can learn from what you did. I love to see when they catch, when they do something wrong. That means that your mind is growing and you're thinking. Sometimes I get things wrong, that's okay, and then I just correct myself and then I just be better than yesterday. Kiss your brain because guess what? You grew your brain today and you should feel very, very proud of you. We always do a launch, so that's where I read the problem typically three times and I have kids restate it. So I want you to hold in one hand, hold your 34 coins, okay? How many does he want to have all together? Is he gonna add more than 72 to that 34? Or is he gonna add less than 72 to that 34? Okay, I'm interested to see how you're gonna figure out how many coins Braylon is adding to his collection so that he has 72 all together. Your papers are already on your table. You have pencils, your cubes are there if you need them. Okay, I'm gonna walk around and check on your thinking, so is Ms. Campbell. We're gonna quietly transition back to our tables. Then we go into the grapple time where the students work and try to figure out. During that time, me and my um, assistant are conferencing with the students just to see what they're thinking, where they are, and how we can push their strategies. So what are you thinking you're gonna do? You don't have to do it for me, I just wanna know what you're thinking you're gonna do. I can add more okay. so I can get to 74, but I can't So you're going to add more so you can get to 72? Yeah, don't, don't take okay. away too. All right. Ooh, I'm going to come back and check and see, okay? When I'm speaking with students, I'm either asking them an assessing question to help me understand what they are thinking and what they understand about the problem, or an advancing question to unpack what a next step or grapple might be for them. The goal is to ensure all students are thinking about the right math and are thinking deeply for the full working time. When I do see a kid and they have the wrong answer, I ask them, can you explain to me how you did this? And does that make sense? When my teacher comes and talks to me about problem solving, they, they ask what, what I'm doing first and what I'm thinking about. Tell me. 12. 12. And then I tell them what I'm thinking about. They don't care if you have the wrong answer. It's just that they, they care if you try. To have 72. Okay, why what, what happened? You said no. So you, get, you said your answer was 12, right? Okay, and then you showed me your strategy, right? But then we just counted, right? Then you said no. Why did you say no? How do you know that? So you want to try another strategy? Okay. So a good question for problem solving really gives me insight into what the kids are thinking. It helps me understand, do they actually understand the problem? If they don't understand the problem, the questions I ask will help me see what they're actually thinking. So I'm thinking I've had 34. Okay, why'd you start with 34? Because 34 is a lesson number, and I know if I start with a lesson number, I don't, I don't have like a big number. Okay. So, um, I, I have 34 and 34, 34. I'm gonna like add so I get to 72, but that's gonna take too long. So I'm gonna go like drop six to 10. Oh, so you're gonna add by tens because you think that will be faster? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. All right, I see that you labeled. I can't wait to see how you finish that. Most of the students in my class right now are thinking with a direct base 10 model where they're using their cubes or they're drawing a picture of base 10. I want to start moving them further along. And Destin was experimenting with some invented algorithms and he could kind of explain his thinking really clearly too. What are you thinking, Destin? I'm thinking 34 and then I add 
changes and we start the 62. Okay. Then add the um, so you're gonna you're trying to get to what number? To, it's trying to get to 72, okay. I see that you're using tens and ones. I'm wondering if there's another way that you could show your thinking. I wonder if there's another way. I'm gonna come back and check, okay? And then after that, we move into our discourse time where we have two shares and then the majority of the time is the rest of the class talking about what they saw. Oh my goodness, you're thinking today and your ability to explain your thinking. I am so impressed with what I'm seeing.